Good morning, happy Sunday to everybody. Um, I have been kind of quiet and I just wanted to do a little video uh, of showing some of the things that we have been up to and doing. Um, I get distracted with all the things that we have going on around here and doing videos, although my videos are very raw and not polished like other people's are, um, I still wanted to try and put some content out there because I think that having other um, voices um, within the homesteading or domestic life, uh, um, home-centric type um, uh, life that we live is important because what one person's channel may not re resonate with you, another person's might. And I think that um, our um, particular location and what we're doing out here is a touch different, maybe not radically different, but a touch different than what I've seen some other people do. Um, one of the impetuses for putting this video out is I was watching uh, Jill Winger of uh, the Quarry Homesteads uh, video that she put out and how she doesn't like uh, homesteading as a term. I kind of, I kind of, I kind of agree with her. I've actually uh, toyed with the idea instead of calling it a homestead, um, um, the, the road that is adjacent to my property, it's actually called Home Place, like officially, but nobody calls it that. Um, it's actually called Home Place Road. And I don't know if there's any kind of real label, and I, I know we're, f we're fans of labels in this world, but um, maybe that's better than homesteading. I don't really know. Um, I think that the old fashioned on purpose, the old ways are, uh, good and we have to a large extent been led down a path that has taken us away from that stuff and that's not good um, i'm always i'm always um an advocate of of technology i mean you know hello uh if i gotta go to work or i gotta go someplace i didn't walk to the store um i didn't get on my horse and go or get into my my horse drawn buggy and go I got in my vehicle and I went, okay? And so there's lots of technologies that we embrace and we don't even think about it, electricity, all kinds of other things. But then there's other things that we a lot of times get suspicious of or shun. And I think that that's, um, maybe if you have a very bona fide reasons for it, I don't have a problem with that. But um, there are other things that we have in the world, in our, in our history, in our heritage, that we have to a large extent just decided to get away from and it's not actually been beneficial to us um, on a very basic level one of the things that I got interested in and involved in this was actually through historical reenactments I had a friend who got involved in a historical react reenactment a big one down in Florida and I went uh, they had a they had a public visitors day and I went I was blown away with all the stuff that I had seen um, it's it's called Alify River rendezvous if uh, if anybody is down in Florida it's in a home uh, homeland Florida um, close to Bartow um, and Fort Meade uh, it's in January usually the third week or so of January is their public public days so if you ever are interested and want to go and see it you know it's it's a Friday, Saturday, but they might have expanded to Thursday, Friday, Saturday. So anyway, I went, I visited him. He showed me all kinds of stuff. And I was like, oh my gosh, this is just the coolest thing. And he was not too far away from where I lived and I was going to school at the time. So a lot of times when I was going to school, I was by his place and we'd, he'd show me other things. He'd teach me stuff and then I'd go to school and it was kind of a regular ritual that I had gotten involved in. And that was sort of like the the primer if you will of some of the older technologies things that i never had been exposed to um i had a nana that was raised on a farm but when i was very young she passed away so you know if if some of those things those country life skills uh that older mindset um in fact pretty much all of my grandparents were gone when i was little like two three years old they were all gone so i never had that experience of learning from an older generation of you know here's what you can do here's some of the cool things um my friend who's a little bit older than me he uh he ended up showing me some of that stuff and kind of took me under his wing which i very much appreciated and in the process of doing that, I had gotten introduced to some different food ways and things like that, that, um, 
you know, it can, it, it, it's, it's going down the rabbit hole. You just go, you know, almost in any different direction that you want to go into. Uh, there, there's so many different things that you can do. But one of the things that I had always been very concerned with was food because I never really thought that the food that we had at the grocery store was fantastic. Um, although I think you can get good options, but um, I had become suspicious of things that, you know, it was like you couldn't get organic food other than in a health food store for the longest time. And then all of a sudden it's showing up in Walmart and, you know, you look at some of the testing, it's, it's, it's not, it's not good. So anyway, um, that's some of the things that we had initially started with and we were in no way, shape or form on a farm. We were in a little subdivision in Florida up for, of all places. And we definitely stuck out. We did not fit in to our neighborhood. Fortunately, we had some really cool neighbors who, you know, we kept our backyard kind of like we had hedges and stuff so people really couldn't see in there. I had a garden back there, I had some, you know, compost. I had other things that were going on back there, things that I did. And, you know, I was always willing to share with my neighbors and they were very happy to have like real tomatoes and, and those kinds of things. And I don't know, maybe we just, you know, they liked us or they didn't want to get on our bad side. I'm not sure which. Um, but we, we, we successfully were able to do a kind of a quasi homesteading type environment there in a very high density uh, neighborhood. I had baked bread, I did all kinds of different things fermenting that, you know, they talk about, um, you know, like in a, if you're in a homestead, whatever. And I was able to do it and it was nice because eventually we knew that we wanted to be here on land and doing all the things that we do. Um, but I was able to work on a skill set and do little things um, and get proficient at those things. So by the time that we moved here <laughs> and got severely overwhelmed with all of the work and the land and everything else, um, I didn't have to worry about the little things. And, and let me tell you as a side note that when you move from one place to another and you don't know anybody, you don't have friends, you don't have family, it's very overwhelming and even lonely too. Um, so, I mean, that's, that's probably the topic of a whole other video with, with, um, you know, where, where you, where you may decide to relocate to. So anyway, um, one of the things that I wanted to show you a couple little things here and there, um, was it is Sunday, but we are out and about doing things and I'm going to go ahead and take you over to the window. I can't, can't flip the camera, but hubby is out there, um, moving dirt. You can see where that brown dirt is. And uh, we have dirt that is um, in that direction that's kind of behind the garage. And uh, we're removing that um, because of some drainage issues. And we are basically functionally widening our driveway so that um, we have a, a, a better area to park vehicles, park tractors, park whatever needs parking. And, uh, and just, you know, if you look at my, my, my property, it's all, it's all hill country. Here comes, here comes hubby. If I can see him, I don't know, can I see him? So anyway, um, that's one of the things that he's doing today. Um, and I am in the kitchen in here making some banana bread. And one of the things I wanted to show you, um, two things actually, um, let me do this. Let me go back this way and set this up. Um, one of the really cool things as far as like some of the homesteading type skills is this cookbook right here, Nourishing Traditions. This is the first book that Sa Sally, Fel Sally Fallon, now Sally Fallon Morell, um, put out about old food ways of traditional um, peoples across the globe that was based on the work of Dr. Weston Price. Um, you can look all this stuff up online. Um, you, a lot of times, even in my little small town, um, this, this cookbook and, and research book was in my local library. I was actually shocked to see it. Good cook, good recipes, good information, goes into a lot of the science, the nutrition of why fermenting, why eating organ meats, why bone broth. In fact, Sally has put out, um, 
several more books, uh, uh, nourishing broths, uh, traditional diets, um, all of that stuff is a little bit more focused in on what's in this book. Um, but she expands, you know, the, the information about why taking bones and cooking them and getting the gelatin and how that helps your joints and relieve pain and, and that kind of stuff. Um, but anyway, what I'm making is banana bread because I have some old bananas that need to be cooked up. Um, and one of the things that I use and I do is I, when I make bread, I grind my own wheat, okay? So this deal right here is a Nutramill. It's a grinder. Um, I have my, my holder right here that basically goes Put in your your uh, wheat in here you set it you know you can grind it it's an electric grinder there's there's manual grinders but i wanted to have a an electric one um, because it does make the job faster um, and they're not that much more expensive than a manual grinder um, but uh, you can have a better genetic variety of wheats spelt kamut um, white wheats red wheats any kind, you can grind beans, you can make Ezekiel bread, you can do all kinds of stuff with these. They're really, really wonderful and better nutrition. So one of the things I wanted to show you real quick is I grind it up spelt. And so I have, actually I got a little, little ramekin. I'm gonna put some water in it. Okay, this is just water. This is not like buttermilk or whatever, which is what I'm doing for the banana bread. Um, and then I'm just taking some of the ground wheat and putting it in this, okay? So what happens, a spoon. what happens with a lot of whole wheats is you've got the bran and you have other things in it that make it kind of not, not gel as good. It doesn't gel as good. Um, or mix as good into the water, um, it, it will stay like clumps of, of dry, right? So one of the things that I had learned when I was starting to bake bread, um, I'll put more in there just so you can see what I mean. Regular flour will just incorporate really nicely, but it's sort of, you can see it, it just kind of sits, right? So one of the things that we talk about in this is it's called sponging, which is basically you have the flour and you have your liquid, a lot of times buttermilk or whatever you can. I can't use milk, so I use um, a, a buttermilk substitute, which is basically like almond milk, a cup of almond milk, and a tablespoon of, of lemon juice. It creates the, the acidity, so it's functionally the same. But then what happens is you sponge it, you let it sit for a little bit. Okay, I'm gonna have to turn this around. So y'all can see better. Okay, so here's my, here is my clumpy, bumpy mixture. And then here is my um, almond milk mixture with flour. And it actually doesn't look too terribly bad. Now I have some other ingredients and stuff that I have to put in that and it's a little bit bumpy, but it's really not bad. It's absorbed a lot of the, the moisture and that's what sponging is. Sponging is basically allowing a much drier material to absorb the water, which is what you definitely want. So I'm gonna finish up making some of this banana bread and we will enjoy. Good seeing you. you.